What's going on, everyone? It's Adam and Craig with Grandstand Golf. This is our PGA DFS picks for the 2021 RBC Heritage. Craig, we just had a crazy week with the Masters last week. Our picks, uh, we're kind of going back and forth here. Whose picks are doing well, whose aren't. Uh, your picks weren't great, but I think we're going to make it up with our sleepers recap a little bit. Your sleepers were... Yeah, feel, uh, feeling good about the sleepers, feeling bad about the picks. That's as simple as it got for me last week. I think if you combine our picks and sleepers, we had three of the six players in the Millie Maker winning lineup. So we, we were close on a lot of guys, but we didn't quite have all six there. Uh, but from our picture last week, Finau top 10, Simpson 12, Casey 26, great final round, and Fitzpatrick 34th. Uh, didn't have a deck wheel. We talked, we talked about him in the A to Z, for sure. We talked about him in the A to Z. <laughs> he did and also he in the slotted tiers. in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also in the tiers is a good pivot. But uh, yeah, no head decky in our pick show. But love to see that win. Yep. Okay, are we moving on to RBC Heritage? No no time off here. We're going straight to RBC Heritage? Yeah, just like Bill Belichick would say, on to Cincinnati. I'm saying on to Harbortown. <laughs> on to Harbortown. I like it. If you want the full preview, you know, we've got the other video out. So go check that out for a little background on the course and, you know, some of the other things into this week. But uh, let's get right into it. Picks above 7,500. Yeah, let's do it. My first one here, Patrick Cantley, 10,900 on drafting. He is second there on FanDuel, 11,600. He is third. You know, everybody has gone stung. It seems like everybody's gone stung by Patrick Cantley in the Two of his last three starts. The players he missed the cut mm -hmm. and the masters he missed the cut. He was kind of a pretty big favorite. Maybe not favorite, but DFS kind of darling in both. Uh, so for me, it's a tale of two 2021s. In his first three events, he had three top 15s and two top threes. He was really threatening. He was hitting course records. Like he was doing it all at the start of 2021. The last three events, he has two missed cuts with the players and the masters and only one top 20. So it's been a tough goal for Patrick Cantley. Why at Harbortown? His history at Harbortown is fantastic. He's been third, seventh, and third from 2017 to 2019. He didn't play in the 2020 version, but he's played the three previous. And his strokes in total average, average per round is 2.55. Like he is absolutely a horse or course. It's the second best of anyone in the field, his strokes in average. And he does, has that over 12 rounds. Finally, here's why I like Cantley. Webb Simpson is right below him. DJ is right above him. He's been a lot of people have been burned by him recently. I don't think he's going to get any ownership at all. I think it'll be well below 20% on DraftKings. I'm going to go right back there. I, it's not necessarily a dip in price, but it's going to be a dip in ownership. And I'm absolutely going back there. If we look at strokes in total in the field, he's second over three months. He's second over six months. He's second over two years. He is just the second best golfer in this field, period. I'm going to play him when other people don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I don't know if his ownership is going to get as low as you are thinking, uh, but he definitely has a post-hype sleeper feel to him. I mean, anytime someone kind of gets as much hype and as much momentum as, as he had going into these two big tournaments, there is going to be yeah. that fall off. But I think the other thing to take into consideration is going to an RBC Heritage you're, we're losing a lot of the casual DFS players, um, you know, DFS golf players, I guess just to say. Sure. And and so I think a lot more of the people who are playing this on a week in, week out basis are are more likely to play Cantlay. Um, but I, I definitely like he without a doubt, he's going to be in my player pool. I like him this week. I don't I've been hearing on Twitter, on our discord, people that, you know, play every day. They're like, Cam, they call there's him a, Camp Play. There's a lot of there's a lot there. of emotion people need to vent, but then when they go to make there's their next lineups, for some reason, yeah. guys like can't lay find their way back in there. Um, but no, for sure he's in my player pool. I, I like him a lot here. Uh, yeah. And the guy that uh, shuffles back and forth with him, whether you're looking at, at DraftKings or FanDuel, uh, Webb Simpson. He's third on on DraftKings at 10,700, second on FanDuel at 11,800. Um, to me, this is it, it, I think this is going to be a chalky play, uh, but it's one that I will be making. Um, I'll probably try to come out at least at even ownership. I don't know probably try to find a way to get overweight on him uh, i don't know okay. you know i haven't gone through roster construction yet so i don't know what i'll have to do to get there um but you look at his strokes in total stats uh you know recent form is good three last three months he's got uh, you know basically all three of these time periods he's got basically two strokes gained um but you look at it he's fourth in the field over the last three months Third in the field over 12 months that's behind um cantley and dj but then two years yeah. Webb actually jumps up to first. I mean, he, it's just the consistency factor gets him up there. Uh, so I, I do think that 
Webb is is sort of one of those underrated superstars types. You know, yeah, si- somewhat sure. similar to Cantley, but I, I think people do sleep on him. Beyond that, uh, as a fit for the course, uh, you know, it's it's a course that demands driving accuracy uh, much more so than a lot of courses. And uh, Webb's pretty darn good at that. He's fifth. This is not in the field. This is in the entire PGA. He's over seventy percent. I don't think that number is going to be that high at the end of the year. Um, but it just kind of shows you how good he is. Um, you look at yeah. our model. So our our Grand Sand Golf model uh, projects him at one point two two strokes gained, uh, which is first. Uh, now, essentially, that's a long term fit and form model, uh, but basically mm-hmm. it matches up with what we've seen from Webb at this course. Uh, so yeah. last time we were here, 2020 winner, Webb Simpson. He's got four straight top 20s at this course. And then you look over the last nine times he's been here, he's gaining over a stroke and a half. So uh, he, he's really, he's just killing it. He's super consistent. Um, I, I think it's a safe play. I also think it's an upside play. It kind of, it checks all the boxes for me. I mean, one of my things I kind of often say is I'm not playing the winner from last week or the winner from the last year event uh, because they do get inflated ownership, I think. But Webb Simpson, like you said, he was my pick to win the Masters. I really like where Webb's game is at generally. I think his his floor is super, super, super high. And then he can pop. He pops in these courses where he knows I think he can win. It's an accuracy course. It's a well-rounded uh, balanced attack that Webb brings that he can. He has one here. So absolutely he can win here. And it, it wouldn't entirely shock me to see Webb Simpson go back to back and it doesn't demand distance which is one of the things that he yeah. oftentimes has to find ways to compensate for so it really lets him use all his tools to the utmost of, of his it really plays to his strengths yeah for sure okay my second pick I kind of feel like in the same profile we're going here Matt Fitzpatrick don't call me Matthew as you said DraftKings he's 9100 he's 11th there on FanDuel 10,900 he's ninth. Last seven events, he's been super consistent. So Matt Fitzpatrick, we've known for a while. You, you know, he's a younger guy, but he's been kind of steadily kind of climbing. But this year, I feel like he's playing his best golf. We've kind of seen from Matt Fitzpatrick. So the last seven events, this includes, you know, Masters and all that, six top 20s, three top 10s. So almost every event, he's in the top 20s. It was just the Masters where he didn't. That's that's fine. Mm-hmm. I can excuse that. And then half those, he's in top 10. So he's playing really well. He's kind of getting to that you know, exceeding where his price is at uh, in DFS. Looking at his last three RBC Heritage starts, because I just feel like, as you kind of described, his his game fits here really well. And and recent history here, he's been 14th, 39th, 14th. Not great, but it kind of sets up for that course, okay, or that next big leap, you know, a top five or a first. You know, he's playing the course well enough and learning the course. Now that he's playing a little bit better, he can take that next leap. But if you look at those last 12 rounds that he's played here, he's plus 1.75. So he is playing the course exceptionally well in the last few years. And then looking at his profile, why I think he's a good fit here. We're talking about accuracy. So he's 17th in driving accuracy at 68%. Strokes in total, very just well-rounded. This is the entire PGA. So it's not just players in the field. It's the entire PGA. He ranks 15th at plus 1.47. We know he's a super strong putter. His putter's been very good lately. And then when you put that all together, in the Grand Sand Golf DFS model, he ranks fourth. So he's fourth there. He's Mm -hmm. 11th on DraftKings. I feel like his profile is perfect for this course. He's playing well. He's playing super consistent. I feel like we're just waiting for that pop, that top five, that first kind of, that win. Uh, We did have one late in Europe, but getting that win in PGA, I just feel like it's right on the horizon. So I like Matt Fitzpatrick this week. Yeah, and he is one one of these guys that can win. You know, there's, oh, yeah. there's the people who are our top golfers who you don't feel like they're going to be able to close out tournaments. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick definitely can. Uh, he was my pick last week at the Masters. A little bit, obviously, the pricing and, and field has changed. But uh, I, I, I like him this week again. I, I think he's value. I think he has upside. Uh, probably, you know, compared, I mean, obviously compared to the two guys we've talked about, maybe not quite as safe of a floor. But the way that he's played yeah. over the last few months, uh, I, I'm feeling fairly comfortable with it. He's uh, earning so, that floor. I mean, yeah, he, he's showing that there is a safer and safer floor as time goes on. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay, my next one. Uh, speaking of maybe not so safe floors, uh, Terrell yeah. Hatton, 9,500 on DraftKings. He's eighth in pricing. 11,200 over on FanDuel. He is sixth over there. Um, so just to just to give you an idea, I think he's value whether you look at it short term or long term. Uh, last three months, he's 1.77 strokes gained. He's seventh in the field. Twelve months falls a bit, 1.71, but fifth in the field over that time. And then two years, 
stroke and a half gained fourth in the field um and these are numbers from data golf which you know as we always mention does incorporate both european yes. tour and pga tour stats um so you know good course history i think he doesn't have as long or you know compared to a webb simpson uh he doesn't have as many starts here or anything but mm-hmm. he was third here last year in 2020 now one of the things i think to take into consideration when you're looking at histories this week the 2020 version was yeah. significantly different you know so uh, i'm looking at webb who won it and then hatton who came third uh it was significantly different than the previous uh editions of this tournament because the strength of field was 712 last year you look at the years before that it's usually in the i've seen 450 ish right. something right. like that 700 we're talking like wgc we're talking big yeah. big uh you know maybe not quite the majors but the next the next tournaments down will be in those low 700 ranges mm-hmm. so um it was right after the covid restart you had all the top players in the field yeah. essentially um so to me uh right now terrell hatton is a bit of a by low time i think he's gone five straight events where he's gained strokes on the field um four of those five he's gained over a stroke but the best finish in that time was a tied for 18th uh this past week at the masters so to me that's indicative that he's playing good golf you know good but not great golf and but the the results aren't super flashy so uh, Mm -hmm. that's to me where okay so if he had a popped for a few top tens his price in this field would be higher so yeah. I, I think it's just you know I, I was talking about Cantley as a post type sleeper I think Hatton might be a bit of that right now where people are just going to be a little bit behind on the fact that he is yeah. in good form um, and is good value and, and kind of checking those boxes yeah I, I agree with everything you said I just for me personally Hatton's a hard guy to figure out I feel like I, I feel like I've been I've been guessing wrong on him a little bit. So at his price point at 9,500, I got to see who's around there and see how he fits. Like you said, roster construction. So all things I got to think, I don't think I'll omit him. I don't think it'll be full faith for me. I just got to see how he fits kind of with the construction for the week. You want good chemistry on your team. Yeah, I need good chemistry. That's exactly it. I don't want these angry (laughs) golfers to kind of mess up the mojo of my team. No, man, he's going to pop that thumb. (laughs) Pop that thumb. Okay, my third pick here, Craig. And this is a little tease for our sleepers. I'm going pretty high here. My lowest guy is 13th, and I usually don't do that. I dip into low eights or high sevens for our picks. On our sleeper show, I'm going to give a couple gems in the sixes. That's just going to round out your lineup perfectly. So <laughs> I, I, I'm sticking up top here because I feel like my three picks are slam dunks. They really are. Abraham Abraham answer is my third pick here. 8,900 on DraftKings. He's 13th on FanDuel, a little bit more expensive. 10,700, he's 11th. Again, like Fitzpatrick. Playing really well, really consistent right now. He's coming off five consecutive top 26s. And that's not, you know, just kind of walkover events, opposite field events, whatever it is. These are high events. There are two World uh, World Golf Championships, the Players Championship, and the Masters. So he's getting to the top 26 in all four of those events, which are the best players in the world. Now we kind of get, like, not an off week, but, you know, not all the top guys are showing up this week. I think this is his time to kind of step on the accelerator get a win so he's played six rounds here he has a missed cut i think he missed the cut by about four it wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't good uh and then he was second in 2020 that that stacked field that we talked about he was second his strokes in total including those missed cuts in those six rounds are 1.81 so we've got the guys that were first second and third last year <laughs> yeah hey we think they're gonna re- i like it hey yeah hey. Uh, and then looking at why, I mean, I, again, Leif Fitzpatrick, I feel like his fit is exactly what you need for Harbor Town. So driving accuracy, he's second on the PGA Tour this season at 72.8%, 14th in greens and regulation, 70.4%. I just feel like it's kind of that whole Kevin Kisner thing. When you go to a course where you feel like you can actually compete and beat these guys, you can you can beat Dustin Johnson here. You can beat these kind of bombers. I think these guys who are very... Well, I, I couldn't beat Dustin Johnson here. Just, I know just you to clear that up. <laughs> I, you're not in my sleeper show. That's how I'm going to be spoiler. Um, these guys who know they can win here, I feel like get a little bit of confidence as soon as they step on the property and know, you know what, I can compete here through four rounds and possibly win. Yeah, for sure. And and you know what? It, one of the things about Abraham Anter is he hasn't gotten that win yet. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think this is exactly the kind of course that he could be he could be breaking through and getting his win. Um, you know, yeah. obviously second place here last year. But uh, yeah, I think it sets up perfectly for him. Uh, I like the pick. He's definitely going to be in my pool. Yeah. 
Uh, my last one here, uh, you know, since you're not going to find any value for people down below 8,900, <laughs> I'll go down there. I'm going with Russell Henley, 7,900 on DraftKings, 23rd in pricing, 9,400 on FanDuel, 28th in pricing. Uh, nice. This is a bit volatile uh, for sure. I think that there's high upside to this, but uh, it, it's been, you know, maybe a bit questionable what we, what we've seen from Russell Henley. Um, but we look at the, I, I still think there's value there. So that's always where yeah. I try to start with my picks. Uh, last three months he's gaining a stroke and a half 13th in the field we look at 12 months he's still about a stroke and a half ninth in the field that's just because obviously not not as many people are able to keep it up over as long a period two years all of a sudden his average falls to 0.87 so obviously the the past you know from once we're beyond 12 months into the the second year he wasn't doing as well but still his average over that time is 20th in the field which is still value to me so the long term yeah. form i think it, or the long term value is good we look at him in the so the value in the grandstand golf model this is not the ranking in the model yes, but right. he's fifth in value in the grandstand golf model that you know long term form and fit um he's the highest valued player over 7500 now spoiler alert uh, you, you said your sleepers are probably going to be in the 6 Six thousands. There's a guy at seventy five hundred. I think is great value. So tune into the sleeper video for that one. Um, does it rhyme with perk? It does rhyme with <laughs> Miss Perk. Um, okay. 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 Yeah. Um, you know. So a teaser there. A little teaser. A little teaser. Not a very good one. Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> Russell Henry. So twenty seventh in driving accuracy. I think he fits. He fits kind of the profile of player we're looking for here. Super good on approach, which. That's that's what I like to see. Those are the people that I feel like can yeah. pop. He's a good ball striker, excellent on approach. Um, course history is tumultuous, I would say. Uh, he has only made... So this is why I think this is a volatile play. He's only made the cut in three of seven starts here. But when he has made the cut, he's finished fairly well. So he's got the sixth in 2013 when he really popped. And then a 23rd and a 26th in 2016 and 2017. Obviously not quite what we want to see, but, but you know, you're working his way up into the high end of the field. Um, yeah. I don't love that course history. To me, it's not like I would pick him because of his course history. But I do like the fact he has top 10 here before. You know, a sixth, a sixth is a good yeah. finish. I do think Russell Henley, just by his very nature, is kind of a... Uh, can top five easily you know he, he's coming off yeah. a third place at the honda classic but he also is a guy yeah. that misses cuts he shouldn't miss and all that kind of thing so um he is he's one that you need to be prepared for the risk if you're going to make the play for sure yeah i i completely agree the one thing i re i really like about russell handling on i was just pulling it up here so he's 7900 on DraftKings. right around him are siwoo kim who people see pete die they mm -hmm. plug in siwoo kim and i also actually had siwoo as a pick here <laughs> Okay, there you go. Uh, Bobby McIntyre, who led the Masters in birdies, is right there. Charlie Hoffman, who's playing some of the best golf of his career. Christian Benzedenhout, uh, Kevin Kisner, Ian Poulter. So there's a big clump of guys here that, you know, aren't going to focus uh, ownership on Henley. I think he could go overlooked a little bit because he sometimes is kind of this DFS darling yeah, as, for you know, sure. in that mid-pack mid pack area and i think with those other guys around him he could kind of float under the radar yeah, a you don't really bit. want him over 20 percent ownership it kind of you start to lose your value yeah yeah exactly okay that is our pj dfs picks what do we have going on this uh, for our weekly schedule tournament preview first look that's already out on youtube pj dfs model which we've referenced here is live on our website the link is below sleeper show as we've teased a little bit is coming soon our live show will be wednesday night 9 30 p.m eastern and DFS Showdown picks, I am taking a little bit of the family away on plugging this weekend, so I won't be doing uh, any Showdown picks. We might do something on Discord, but I don't think we're going to do any videos. Just putting it out there for you guys to know yeah, now. Yeah, we're you know, a little pump the brakes after the Masters, get some family time in, get a little time away. I approved it, so 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 we'll we'll allow it. Um, but you know, we appreciate everything from you guys. It's going to be a little bit less content than last week, but uh, we'll be back to full speed again afterwards. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and watch our other videos. Good luck this yep, week. Thanks, guys.